KSIV now presents Encounter, a public service program of Bot Radio Network, dedicated to keeping you informed about the issues that affect your life. Now, here's today's Encounter broadcast. This is Harold Hendrick. The program is Encounter. John and I don't get to travel internationally that much, but we did have one vacation in Cancun. And would you believe on the sixth floor of our, I mean, excuse me, the 11th floor of our hotel, the news comes on. And the news said an Illinois pastor had been shot and murdered in his own pulpit. And I was taken aback, but I said, I probably don't know him. There are 10,000 pastors in Illinois. And they flashed the picture of Fred Winters and his wife, Cindy Winters, and their two daughters, and I nearly fell out of the chair. It's one of those cases where you will you kind of remember where you were when something so catastrophic happened. We are delighted that Cindy Winters, that dear widow, who was so used of God in the nationally in the follow-up statements regarding the homegoing, the martyrdom of her dear husband, uh, delighted that she's right here. Cindy, thanks for coming in and sharing your heart and getting us caught up uh, on the Bot Radio microphone. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's always good to be here, Harold. Well, Cindy, I just, uh, where do we start? You've written a book. We're going to be getting to that. Uh, but after we we got that initial shock, then you started having national opportunities to express yourself. I remember, I don't know if it was Good Morning America, something like that, but you gave a witness that honored the Lord right in the throes and the, the, you know, within a few hours virtually of this tragic death of your husband as he was shot in the pulpit. Uh, do you, could you describe the grace that you experienced that got you through that awful time? Uh, it's, it's pretty indescribable, quite honestly. When I look back on that time and when I think about everything that was asked of me and the opportunities that I had, uh, it's truly by God's grace, and it's um, it, it just goes back to that verse that says that when we are at our weakest, God is at his strongest, and uh, and how, uh, you know, it's his strength is made perfect in our weakness, and, and that is so incredibly true, and I had never experienced it to that magnitude in my life, but I am so grateful that God was able to use me in the way that he did, and um, when, I, when I think about um, just how the words flow, you know, would fly out and just what the clarity of thought I had in those moments. And then I would leave that moment and then I would go home and I would fall apart and I would have such difficulty. My. You know, I just knew that it was God's grace. And and it really did encourage me, though, because I knew then whatever I needed to to do in, in the days and the weeks that, that were to come, that, that God would be there for me. And his presence has just made all the difference in my life. It's been... Four years now? It'll be four years on Friday, uh-huh. Uh, and we're talking about Friday, March the 8th. 8th, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, for those new in the area, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, can you, without hoping, it, ho without my wanting to reopen wounds, can you at least give the capsule of, sure. of what happened that day? Sure. Well, it was just pretty much a normal Sunday morning for us. Um, Fred and my older daughter, Alyssa, had gone off to church. And then my younger daughter, Cassidy, and I, we had followed uh, because we had three services at our church. And so um, we didn't go to the early service. My We usually went to the, the middle service. But my older daughter, Alyssa, she had gone to the first service she, uh, with with Fred, but she wasn't actually in the service. She had gone to help out with the child care. So fortunately, none of us were in that first service. Um, but my daughter and I, we were on our way to church. And as we went over, you know, the hill there to go and, and saw the church in sight, what, what we encountered were emergency response vehicles everywhere. And uh, we saw, you know, cars pulled over on the sides of the road. And, and we really couldn't figure out what was going on. But my first thought was possibly there had been just, you know, a huge car accident mm -hmm. at the main entrance to the road to, the, to get into the church building. And um, we were there and um, we were met by a fireman and he told us that we needed to pull over because there had been an incident at the church. Did he know who you were? No, he did not. I, I did identify myself at the point, though, and, 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 you know, and say, could he, you know, what, what had happened? And he just told me I needed to pull over. And so when I pulled over, though, I encountered some people, some church members there. And it was that at that point I had been told, I was told that Fred had been shot. And so oh I was my. I was taken to the hospital. And your daughter was in the car and hearing this? She was. She was. Um, and so I was taken to the hospital there by a, a sweet woman at our church. And 
that was there at the hospital then that I was told that, that he, you know, that he was dead. Um, and it was just, you know, the most unbelievable and horrific shock ever. I, I never, even at, as I was told that he had been shot, you know, I didn't understand why or how or didn't have any of the details, but I really didn't get the sense that he wouldn't be okay. I actually got the opposite sense. I thought everything was going to be okay. But, um, you know, he, he, he died instantly. And uh, it was just, um, you know, one of those, those moments where you just can't believe it. Um, and I think that's one of the most horrible things about victimization is that all this, all these circumstances and these horrible feelings and everything starts flooding you and you realize your life is spinning out of control and there's nothing that you can do to stop it. That's Cindy Winters telling about the, the martyrdom, really. Her husband shot mm-hmm. down just as he was con- what, concluding a message, I think. Uh, yeah, he wasn't quite halfway through, I believe. Oh, in the middle of it. Yeah. At First Baptist mm-hmm. Church, Maryville, which is just across the river from St. Louis in the northeast part of the region. If For those local who cross 270 in the north part of St. Louis County and continue on a few miles just to the south, is the first, well, just near Troy, Illinois. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a personal note, let me quickly say, my daughter and her husband had been attending, mm-hmm. and they were at the end, the previous Sunday, uh-huh. they were in the foyer with Fred, and they went on about how gracious he was. Do you have a bulletin? What can we do? He'd preach three services. He had to be tired. Mm -hmm. And yet he stayed there. And and as my daughter said, she was leaving. She turned around and he was smiling and waving at her. Mm -hmm. That was Uh, Just, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for her to have that precious moment with this dear man of God. And, you know, he he had a video, a five-minute video, that was on your website as to how people could come to faith in Christ mm-hmm. that was shown many times after after his going to heaven, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's still there. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I even thought about it, maybe getting your permission to put it on my website you because can. it's mm-hmm. big. And in that scene, by the way, that shows him, it shows a picture right in the corner where he's speaking uh-huh. of his bride. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it, he was in his office when he did that. Uh-huh. That was yeah. just uh-huh. a press. Uh, tr- treasured and mm-hmm. precious picture and, and clear description of how to be forgiven of sins and mm-hmm. get the gift of eternal life. You've written a book, Cindy Winters. Tell I us have. about it. I have. Well, I didn't set off to write this book, but um, what it was was um, I would just find that in my moments of just despair and pain and just um, just being very overwhelmed with everything that I was experiencing um, in my walk of grief that I would sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and I would just begin to write. And as I began to write, um, a lot of uh, scripture and some Bible stories and different things would, would, would just come to mind. I think it was just God helping me to recall things that I needed to remember at that moment. And they would just kind of just become like almost like little devotional thoughts. Um, and as I wrote some of those, um, I thought about putting them on my website because I thought, well, maybe in the way that it would help, it, it helped me, it would help somebody else. Because when I would get done writing, I would feel this sense of uh, some peace, a little bit of hope, and I would think, okay, you know what, I, I can make it through. The, I can make it through the day now. Mm. It was very therapeutic for me to I do see. this. So I began to put them on my website, and 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 that was all I was going to do with it. Um, but as I started getting some feedback uh, that they had helped other people, I thought, you know, well, maybe I should do more with this. Um, but I really hesitated because they're very open. Um, it's uh, just some dark places that, that said, my heart went. You used the word raw, I think you very, said. It. Yeah, very raw and honest. And uh, it's not, you know, pretty up or anything like that. But it, it's truly what my heart and uh, went through and, and where I've been. Um, and when I say the pit, you know, definitely the pit. Um, and so, the name of the book, full yeah, wording. Reflections it, from the pit. Reflections uh-huh. from the pit mm-hmm. by so, Cindy Winters. So I ended up, um, you know, just toiling with the idea of maybe putting them in a, in a, in a book, but also including, um, you know, places for people to also put some of their journaling as well. And uh-huh. I included some poems and some pictures and scriptures and, and different things like that. And so went ahead and made that happen. It was a hard decision to do, but in the hopes that it would help somebody else, um, I, I wanted to do that. So, And Cindy, I said off air and I repeat that so often the you're opening up to your dark days, mm-hmm. your your depression, mm-hmm. that the, the, the inevitable Right. Uh, from one who loved her husband as you did, uh, it 
that will be identifiable to so many people more than if everything is just wonderful and no no problems, you know. So I commend you for opening up and, and helping a lot of people. Now, as we're, we're talking here, you told me the books were to be delivered while you're at this studio <laughs> to your house. In other words, they're that fresh, that new. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. And they should be on Amazon later on this week, and, and that's where people can find them. But um, I'm having an open house this Sunday, March the 10th. Open um, for everyone? Open for everyone, yeah. It's going to be from 1 to 4, uh, and it's going to be in downtown Edwardsville at the historic Wildy Theater. Um, so it, I would love for people to come by. They can they can grab a book and we'll have some refreshments. But it's just going to be a time for people to to be able to come and and get this book. But I think also for um, a time for for people to be able to to, to sort of just just unite. I think many times when um, we're hurting and when we've gone through tragedy and we've had some difficulties, it, it's a it's it's good to come together and it's good to be able just to to be in each other's presence. Now that's March the tenth. That's a mm-hmm. Sunday afternoon. One to four at the location in Edwardsville, Illinois again? Yeah. Wildy, the Wildy Theater. Wildy mm-hmm. Theater in Edwardsville. Mm-hmm. And information can be gained by going to Cindy's ministry website. You well, have a ministry. Yeah, and also on Facebook, Grace and, and Hope Ministries on Facebook. Graceandhopeministries.org mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then Grace and Hope Ministries on Facebook. That's right. Mm-hmm. Cindy, yeah. bless mm-hmm. your heart for what? Just taking the worst blow life could offer. And, and not being destroyed and ruined and finding the grace and sharing your story and helping a lot of other people, being faithful in your witness in the, in the most severe of trials. Cindy Winters, you're a wonderful woman, and I'm mm-hmm. one of, you're one of my heroes. Oh, well, thank you. It's just <laughs> by the grace of God, and I'm so grateful to him. Thank you. So good to have Cindy Winters here. Once again, the basic information, graceandhopeministries.org is where you can get her book, uh, what from the pit? Uh, reflections, reflections from the pit. From mm-hmm. the pit. Also on Amazon.com mm-hmm. and the open house. Though this will be on HaroldHendrick.com, but for those listening on air this week, March tenth, one uh, to four p.m. in Edwardsville is the open house, and we're all invited. Cindy Winters, thank you so very, very much. Thank you, my pleasure. The program is Encounter. This is Harold Hendrick. <laughs>